up, not just saying things, was born 12 miles away from here in a house, it was a white house, large white house, and it was called the White House on the Verdigris River, okay? White House on the Verdigris River. And the story I tell is this guy, this little kid, this Cherokee kid that was born here 12 miles away, went from the White House on the Verdigris River all the way to Washington, D.C., where he befriends seven different presidents. That's kind of cool, right? From the White House here in Oklahoma, well, it was Indian Territory at the time, all the way to Washington, D.C., the White House, the big men, right? He's always interested in joking the big men because he says the bigger the man, they can take that kind of heat, right? If you're a big man, you can take this kind of heat. So November 4th, 1879, this legend starts off here about 12 miles away. And what do I always tell kids? I always say, hey, you kids, you're from here, Oklahomans that come and visit us, our schools. I say, you kids right here, you have a connection to one of the world's greatest citizens. And he was born here. You have that connection. Why do I do that to kids? Why do I slow it down and kind of talk to them like this? Because I think they could still be inspired to become that type of person. And what type of person was Will? He was someone who brought us together. His whole story is bringing people together. And so that's where I like to start with him as well. So November 4th, 1879, that's my intro. He was born on a cattle ranch, 60,000 acre cattle ranch out there in Uvagoff. If you were out there when he was born, that 60,000 acre cattle ranch ran from Caney River all the way to the Verdigris River Claremore and Tallala, 60,000 acres that Will grew up on. Now, on that 60,000 acres, they had about 10,000 head of Texas Longhorn cattle. And since you guys aren't school kids, I'm not going to have you throw up those big Texas Longhorns, right? I mean, you can. There we go. Okay, hey, there we go. I got you to do it. We like to get kids interactive, right? Thinking about Will. How could they become Will? Little things that inspired Will. The little stories that happened, right? He's an Oklahoman. Now, when he was born out there, he was going to be, what, a rancher's son. Clem Rogers owned that ranch, and guess what? He expected his son to eventually probably take that over. Now, that ranch, 60,000 acres, had, like I said, 10,000 head of Texas Longhorn cattle. So Will grew up cattle punching, right? Will grew up as a cowboy would, a rancher's kid. He grew up hard work life, right? He he, he lived the, the strenuous life, as FDR and Teddy Roosevelt would say. Now, F, or excuse me, I almost said FDR. Now, Will Rogers, as he was born into this lifestyle, he started to see one of the ranch hands named Dan Walker. Now, when you guys walked in and you saw that big gigantic painting called Dog Iron, you'll see Dan Walker off in the background. When you leave here, look for that picture. Because that's going to see, that's going to show you, and I always bring this up to kids, it's going to show you one of Will's big inspirations. Dan Walker was a Cherokee freedman that also worked on the ranch with Clem and the family. Now, who showed Will Rogers how to use the rope? Usually a rope is used for utilitarian skills. Is that the biggest word I'm going to use this whole program? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. And I use it every program, and I'm so proud of myself. The director's like, yeah, he's, he's real proud of himself. So Will's used to using the rope for utilitarian skills, right? Roping the cattle. But he sees Dan using it for other reasons. He sees Dan doing around-the-back tricks. He sees Dan going above his head. He sees Dan jumping in and out of his rope. So he starts to see something in that. He starts to see maybe his restless mind is going to latch on to that a little bit more than the cowboy lifestyle. So Will Rogers really starts to practice with Dan, and Dan takes to Will. And it's right there that you start to see two different types of people and Will's formulation of I've never met a man I didn't like. Right? We always tell that to kids. It starts as a young kid when he starts hanging out with different people. It starts there. And I love telling kids that. He's not friends with one group of people. He's friends with everybody. And that's why you say he never met a man. What? He didn't like. And that's something we can still drive into schools, drive into kids' minds. Think about that. Use empathy when you're thinking about other people. Because Will did. That was Will through and through. Now, when we talk about character traits, you could talk about all the good stuff around Will. Right, him bringing up people, helping people along the way. But it's these inspirational moments when you talk about Dan Walker that make him into who he's going to become 
the great cowboy entertainer, Will Rogers, the movie star, the writer. Everybody knows about Will Rogers in the 30s, and this is how it starts. It starts on the ranch with Dan Walker. Now, as that moves forward, he starts roping, and he's restless. So he really doesn't want to do all the work that has to do on the ranch that Dad wants him to do. So he starts getting a little bit more trouble. He also starts to go to school during this time, but that doesn't really work out for him because he's starting to use his rope to what? Rope girls and get into some trouble. Now, when I tell this to school kids, you know they're just <laughs> roping girls, right? They love that part, right? And I always have to preface it with, we don't rope girls, okay? We just don't, right? Will did, but that wasn't part of his story. Now, after Will said, hey, Dad, I'm done with school. I'm done. About 1893, a huge moment came up with Will. He's going to go up to the Chicago World's Fair and sell a few of those Longhorn cattle. Look at me sweating up here. Whew. It's getting wild up here. I should have a fan, right? Let the, the, the hair blow and give it a whole thing, right? <laughs> You're like, please don't. <laughs> so, Will Rogers, 1893. I like to tell you about these inspirational moments. And I'm going to start using my ropes. I'm going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Will, in 1893, he was up there at the Chicago World's Fair selling cattle with Clem. Now, after they got done selling their train load of cattle, they was going to go to the fair. Will wanted to go to the fair. And like these kids, I always tell them, how many kids have been to this county fair? They all know what the fair is about. So they know that Will impression, right? Will's going to go there. He's got a job to do to sell the cattle. But then what does he see off in the corner of his eye? Once they show up to the fair, Will Rogers sees all these grown men wind up each other. And he's, he's a little kid. He's 13 years old at this point. So he's walking up to this, this crowd, and he's trying to see over. He squeezes in. And what does he see in that circle? Well, he sees the world's best roper, and his name is Vincente Orpresa. And Vincente Orpresa is what? He is a vaquero. And the vaquero is dressed head to toe in the finest cowboy duds. Will Rogers said he's never seen anything like that. But also he started to see what Vincente was doing with his rope. What was Vincente doing with his rope? Vincente was doing all kinds of tricks, just like Dan Walker, right? But Vincente was doing something that Will never seen. He was writing his name in the dirt. Will said he wrote his name in the dirt. I still want to see how that looks, because it wouldn't just be like... <laughs> but Will Rogers right there, again, clicks with him. He's already starting to do a little rope tricks with Dan Walker, but right there at the World's Fair, he's going to see stuff that he wants to emulate and is he going to do that is this going to be an inspirational moment well you guarantee it right there he starts to see those tricks that vincente is doing and he starts adapting them to his practice style he starts wanting to get those tricks down just like he saw at the world's fair so it's those inspirational moments dan walker vincente or preza that goes to show will rogers foundation is made up of all different types of people and it starts with that foundation. I've never met a man I didn't like. Vincente Orpresa, Dan Walker. These are huge inspirations in Will's life with the rope. Now let's fast forward, guys. What did Will do after that? Well, he wanted to take that cow punch and lifestyle, get rid of it, and become a cowboy entertainer. What does that mean? Well, he's going to wear the cowboy duds. He's going to be roping. He might even be on a horse. He might even be roping a horse with two or three ropes. That's going to start to become his style, his cowboy entertaining style. Now, Will Rogers is going to quickly make his way overseas, Argentina, South America, South Africa, and he's working on his skills. He joins up with Texas Jack's Wild West Circus. You're up there. I was like, he's over here. Yay! <laughs> and folks, we do have a lecture tonight. Um, Texas Jack Wild West Circus, the book. Woo! So we got the author right here, too. It's kind of cool. But Texas Jack's Wild West Circus, right? And Will. That's where he's going to really learn a lot of his chops, a lot of his different tricks, and kind of just start to own Will Rogers' persona and his kind of a stage performance, or his stage persona, stage performance. Now, Will, again, with the restless, the theme of restless is always going with him. So Will Rogers quickly moves back home and joins up with the Mall Hall Rodeo Circuit. Now, the Mall Hall Rodeo Circuit, see, I'm slowly moving chronologically, bigger ropes, bigger ropes, not even telling you. Oh, I am telling you. Sorry. <laughs> he's joined up with the Mall Hall Rodeo Circuit. He's back, in he's back in America. He is touring all over America, but he makes his way to New York City in 1905. Now, when I tell kids, you got to kind of connect them to him, right? New York City with a Knicks play, right? Kind of like the Thunder, right, here in Oklahoma City. So I always like to make those connections, trying to keep him alive for these young kids. So they can be inspired kind of like I am. 
1905, one of the biggest moments Will Rogers is going to have in his life. He's out there doing his rope tricks. He's really got his own 10 or 15 minute show at this point. Madison Square Garden with the Mulhall Rodeo Circuit. If you think about the town of Mulhall in Oklahoma, we have a town named Mulhall, and that's named after the Mulhalls, right? Zach and Lucille Mulhall. Now, Will was there performing, doing his thing. After he got done, he's putting his ropes up. He's putting his horse up. He's tying it. All of a sudden, the steer gets out, jumps out of its cage, and it starts running across the floor of Madison Square Garden. Now, people start to freak out. I asked my boss if I could let a cow in here in the back and actually have us do this. It's a no-go, right? It's a liability, he says. Uh, we'll talk later, right? <laughs> so, Will Rogers, what does he do? He grabs his rope. He's already got it handy. Pops back on that horse. By the time he's on his horse, that steer has made its way to the third row at Madison Square Garden. We have a picture in our archives that shows you the point of where the cow actually landed. So, Will had to make his way up there, too. Will grabs his rope. He rides his horse all the way up three steps. Boom, throws the rope, grabs the steer, pulls it all the way back down to the floor with thunderous applause. That's, that's your cue to go. <laughs> Thank you. Felt, was, that, was that forced? I don't know. <laughs> so Will Rogers right there. These inspirational moments, Dan Walker, Vincente Orpreza, and then 1905 New York. Why is this huge? Because the next day, Five New York newspapers are going to talk about Will Rogers and the feat that he accomplished, being a hero. Is this going to be the last time he's in the newspapers? No, no, this is just the start. But I love to tell you these huge moments, right, as I'm sweating profusely. <laughs> Hello. All right, we really do got to get one of those fans up here. That'd be nice. Now, let's fast forward a little bit because when I'm talking about inspirations, I'm talking about Dan Walker, I'm talking about Vincente, I'm talking about these big moments in Madison Square Garden. But I also got to talk about Betty Rogers, right? Betty Blake from Rogers, Arkansas. How does that work out? That's pretty ironic, right? Well, 1900, before he did all this uh, New York uh, stuff, 1900, he's going to go order a banjo, and he's going to go to the train station in Ulaga. Remember how we told the kids, Ulaga? He's going to go to the train station, pick his banjo up, but he notices this real cute girl across the way. Who's that real cute girl? And also, the kids always go, ooh, I have them do that, right? I have them go, ooh, you know, because we got to get them involved, having fun with our program. So Will sees this gal, and he's hooked, right? He's going to start writing letters to her a week later. He writes three letters before, he, before she ever writes one. Will is hooked. Will saw her and fell in love. What's Will going to do? Will's out there performing, become this huge cowboy entertainer. He didn't have time for love, does he? Well, he does. He ends up writing three letters to every one letter that she writes him. So it kind of shows you who's really head over heels for who. Well, eight years later, guys, and don't tell my girlfriend this because she'll start to get ideas. Eight years later, two proposals later, he asked her to marry her once. She said no. The second time she said yes, he got down on one knee and he threw what I call the wedding ring. There we go. Hey, right? He got it out of his pocket. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is the wedding ring, right? I thought that was appropriate kind of with the kids too. And they're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And then hopefully I do this and I don't hurt my muscle. Let's we'll see this. I'm going to throw it off. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Should I just finish like this? All right, well, <laughs> okay, so there you go. Will Rogers, he's hitched, and what is this going to mean? It's going to mean another inspirational moment for Will. Why? Because Betty Rogers knows funny. I should have backed up a long time ago, but Will's mother was funny, and Will's mother died in 1890, way before any of this stuff happened. So Will always felt, I always felt like Will was trying to keep his mother's legacy and spirit alive by being the funny person, right? And I always ask kids, hey, is your mom funny? And I'm always hoping they yes, say yes. <laughs> they always do, yes, it's, so it's good. I don't get in trouble there. But why? But why do we talk about her? Because at the breakfast table, Will's starting to really kind of develop himself out of being a cowboy entertainer and more into what? That 1905 thing in, in, in New York City opened the doors for Will, not only in the newspapers, but that next year he's going to be on the vaudeville circuit in 1906. He's going to be touring all over the country 
different stages doing his rope tricks, either on horse, roping a horse on stage, or just his solo performance. Now, this is going to turn into something big. It's going to turn into something big, but some inspirational moment needs to happen first. Will and Betty were sitting at the dinner table, well, breakfast table, whatever meal you're eating, it's that table, isn't it? <laughs> the lunch table, whatever. Will's sitting down at the breakfast, and, and he's eating his breakfast, and he's reading the newspapers. When I tell kids that, I'm like, what? Well, he's thumbing through Facebook, okay? Sorry. <laughs> so he's reading his newspapers, and he starts to just say off the handcuffs, just ad lib and stuff. Well, looky here, blah, 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 blah. And she starts to laugh, right? There's something there that he's saying that she thinks, ah, let's do this on stage. I think you could probably add to your act. So Will Rogers is going to be inspired by his wife. His wife's just, mention, is just going to mention, why don't you start saying funny stuff on stage? You know, whether you're missing your tricks or, you know, just some of the stuff that you said to me right here at the, at the breakfast table. So Will takes that advice. Betty's going to inspire him to become that comic, right? That comedian, that political satirist or satirist. Man, I, I, but, I butchered that one. I said utilitarian correctly. I can't say that one right. <laughs> so, inspiration, inspiration, Betty Rogers inspiration, right? And that's going to lead into my next part of my talk right here. Because it's these people that really open up Will forever, right? It's going to be cowboy entertainer, but after this, it's going to be something else. Now, what does he do next? Is he done there? Did he just pack it up, come here? No, 1911, like, like uh, Pete was telling you, him, he and his family, well, him and Betty, purchased this property to eventually move back here. This is going to be his retirement center, right? And I like that we're here, and I call this his man cave, right? We're kind of sitting in Will's man cave. Now, obviously, he's not here, his house wasn't here, but this is his place, right? And we talk about that because we want to talk about Will's political career as well. He wasn't a congressman, a senator, any of those things. But he had such influence on congressmen, senators, and all the way up to the presidents. Like I told you at the beginning of my story, that this part is such an important part. That influence from Betty is so important to Will's career. Dan Walker is too. Vincente is too. All these people. Now, Will Rogers is going to do what next? He's going to join with the Follies. But simultaneously, he's going to be going to New York City to join up with the Zigfield Follies. That's Broadway, folks. He's up on Broadway, but now he's telling jokes and spinning his rope. He might be spinning his rope, and he might say something like, a dog never does anything for political reasons, right? Or he might say, no man is great if he thinks he is, right? He gets you to start thinking. He's saying things. He might be doing big tricks, small tricks, but he's saying stuff. You're getting to think about it. You're getting to think about politics in a new light. Almost in a critical light, but a way that Will does it is without malice, right? He's not there to hurt people. He's there to bring people together. He sees that we're all human beings. And he says it's great to be, it's great, to be great, but it's even greater to be what? Human. That's one of my favorite Will Roger quotes. It's great to be great, but it's even greater to be human. Will started saying these things on stage, and his, his legacy and his, his, his fame just starts shooting up. 1916, 1917, President Wilson stops by to see old Will Rogers. Will Rogers is talking about the armament conference and says one of the first public political jokes to President Wilson. Well, guess who he hears bust up laughing in the back? It's the president. That's going to give Will that confidence again, whether it's through Dan Walker, Vincente, his wife. It's those moments that give him another boost, confidence. I can do this. I can be this person. Right? It's all happening. 1917 also is going to be his first showing of movies, right? He's going to be in his first movie called Laughing Bill High. He's going to make 50 silent movies by the time he's done and makes the transition into talking pictures. All together, he's going to make 71 motion pictures throughout his career. But it all starts in 1917 with Laughing Bill High. All these cool things are really building steam around Will Rogers. In 1922, Will Rogers has started to make five or six movies by then. He's starting to develop a little coin in his purse, and guess what? He wants to produce his own movie called The Roping Fool. And when you guys get out of here, you walk to the right, you're going to see these tricks and this independent film that Will made 100 years ago this year, 
1922. Will Rogers, one of the first uses of slow motion photography, and then also in black and white films, how are you going to see a rope that's white? Well, he had to put shoe polish on it to make it extra white, right? And you're going to see all those cool things he did out there. I love those little behind-the-scenes stories. Now, Will Rogers is quickly going to move into an upper echelon of entertainment. Now, he's a cowboy entertainer. He's on Broadway. He's, all, he's developing political satire, a original style. The next part is unbelievable. In 1926, he had, he had started writing for different newspapers. He's going to write and be featured in over 350 newspapers by the time he passes away. But Will Rogers, in 1926, another huge inspirational moment for him. And what is that going to be? Well, he's over in Russia in 1926 covering the news for the Saturday Evening Post, right? He's over there covering the news for the Saturday Evening Post. I would love to see what Will Rogers has to say about Vladimir Putin today, right? What would he say about that guy? He always said there's never a bathing suit in Russia, but he always kind of goofed. He would always make fun of those big boy leaders, he called them. The big boys can take it, right? Now, once he gets back six months over in Russia, he gets back to his New York apartment. Betty's there waiting for him. Betty hands him a letter, opens the letter, reads the letters from the White House and President Calvin Coolidge. President Coolidge wants you to come to the White House and stay the night. I'm paraphrasing, right? So Will Rogers is going to what? Have a sleepover at the White House. Yes. Now, when I tell kids this, they're like, what? Did he play Xbox? Did they eat Funyuns? No, 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 no. I don't tell them this part. They smoke cigars. <laughs> you know, I don't tell them that part. You know? But what do they do? Will Rogers was there because Coolidge knew the power of Will's writings. Coolidge knew. And if you know Coolidge's nickname, Silent Cow, Stone Face Cow, <coughs> excuse me, Coolidge knew that he had to connect with the public. But how was he going to do that? Hmm. Coolidge was pretty smart, right? Old Silent Cow was pretty smart. He invited Will Rogers because Will Rogers, at this point, was also on the radio, I failed to mention. Great job, Bart. Failed to mention the radio. I'll bring that up here in a second. Because in 1922, he was also going to appear on the radio, too. So he has already started to work on his newspaper career by the time, and his radio career by the time Calvin Coolidge has him come to the White House. When he gets to the White House, him and Coolidge stay up to about 3 a.m. in the morning talking, eating. Coolidge shares a fish dinner with him. He notices Coolidge is feeding his dog, Rob Roy, underneath the table with the fish. Right? He starts to see the president as a human being. He walks in the White House and he sees 13 different animals. So right away, Will is comfortable. Coolidge and Will both grew up on ranches, different ranches. Coolidge grew up in Vermont. But right there, you start to see what Will's power is. He's there to connect the public, and the president wants him there. I told you at the beginning he's going to be friends with seven different presidents, didn't I? That's how he starts to do it, right? Well, let's fast forward just a little bit here. What happened in 1929? When I ask kids this, they don't know, obviously. What happened in 1929 to America? Right, right, stock market, right? Great Depression. And Will was perfect for this, to talk to the American public, to help us understand what's going on with the banking system, all this highfalutin language that the Congress and senators and presidents are using. Will can distill it down for us to understand. That's his whole thing, bringing people together. That's Will. So what does he do? 1929, the Depression hits, and he has a lot to say about it. In fact, he has daily comments about it. But in 1931, Herbert Hoover is going to ask him, another president asking Will, straight asking him to help. Herbert Hoover is going to go on the radio and give a relief speech, right? This is what we're doing with our funds. Here's what you can expect as far as relief. But who does he have come on as sort of that opening comedian? Will Rogers. He asked Will Rogers to come on in 1931 to speak to the American public to kind of get them primped and ready for what's about to come from the president, Herbert Hoover. 
Will gets on there, and I'll never forget this. When you go in there, it's called the Bacon Beans and Limousine Speech. It's one of our exhibits, and you've got to check it out. One of big Will Rogers' big moments, just like those other ones with Dan Walker, Vincente, Betty, etc., right? Uh, Madison Square Garden. Because in 1931, he appears, and he's speaking to over 60 million people with this broadcast. Will Rogers is going to speak to 140 million of our 190 million people in the 30s whether it's through stage performance, radio, writings, etc. Now, what does he say on the radio that's so crucial for the American public to understand? He says, in a country that has everything in the world, more of everything in the world, more cotton, more everything in the world, we're going to be the first nation to go to the poorhouse in an automobile. We've got all this wealth. What happened? Basically, right, essentially that's what he's saying. He's distilling it down for us to understand. He doesn't care about any of that extra language. He wants us to know that, by golly, we live in this country, this blessed country, and why in the world are we going through this stuff? Will had something to say about it. 1932 rolls around, and FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, is going to ask Will Rogers to become another opening comedian on the radio for his fireside chats. Will Rogers Politics book in our gift shop. Great book by Richard D. White. Talks all about Will Rogers helping out FDR, right? Two progressive guys. Will was always on the up and up with the progressives, right? So it just makes sense that he lined up with FDR. Now in 1933, 34, 35, and we're getting to the end here, folks, obviously. Will was the highest paid actor in the world, making about $2 million per picture now, that's easy for you guys to understand. Okay, Will was, Will was the most famous guy. He was on the radio. He's talking to presidents. He's spending the night at the White House. But how do you, t how do you tell that to kids? Hmm? They don't hear that. They don't hear anything when I say that. So what I do, and I'm, I'll tell it to you guys, right? I kind of just tell you my process. That's how Will was, too. Will would always let you in on how he was kind of figuring things out, too, right? That's just another level of that empathy and that human, right? So what do I say to these kids? I say... Well, raise your hand if you know who Dwayne The Rock Johnson is. <laughs> and they all pop their hands up. Woo! Right? He's going to talk about something fun now. No, I'm going to compare Will, sort of. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, for the last three years, 2019, 2020, and 2021, has made an average of $86 million per year. He is the highest paid male box office star in the world. Now, let's go back to the 30s where Will was. 33, 34, 35. Will Rogers was Dwayne The Rock Johnson, plus all those other things that he was doing as well. Do you see where I'm going here a little bit? I'm trying to help kids understand. Yeah, Will would have his own XM radio station, channel 1879, Valerian. You know, I hear these things, I see these things, and I want kids to understand it too. He's someone that we can still talk about. Someone that we can bring into schools to talk about character, empathy, right? Driving those things that are important to every one of us in here right now. We all talk about, you know, America as being better, right? We always want it to be better. And if you look back in history, this is a guy who actually helped it become better, helped bring people together. Now, in 1935, Will, you know, before that, obviously, he was very big into aviation. He was never a pilot. He was never a pilot, but he loved to fly around to all his lectures, his dinner engagements, maybe even to movie sets, maybe to go visit some politicians, maybe make a speech here or there, go help out a president. He was always on a plane, flying somewhere, right? He didn't fly himself. He wasn't a pilot, but he loved to be in an airplane. In fact, a lot of times, he would pay his weight in postage stamps, right? So he'd pay his weight. I always think he'd put stamps on him. He doesn't do that, but you know, I just picture it in my head, right? Let me, let me have that thought. <laughs> Will Rogers befriends Wiley Post. Wiley Post is the one-eyed pilot. He's the one-eyed pilot that set three different records, aviation records. One for solo flying, one for speed, and one for altitude. Two of those records were set here in Oklahoma, in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Wiley Post was a man that Will said he always trusted. Okay? That's all you got to know. Will trusts him. We're good. Will trusts him. Now, they're going to make their way up to... Alaska, they're up there looking for a new mail route, and Will wants to tag along. 
Well, once they get to Alaska, and if you think about this, he's born in Indian territory because Oklahoma didn't become a state till 1907. He was born in 1879. Alaska's Alaska territory at the time, so book ends here. Check this out. August 15th, he makes his way to Point Barrow, Alaska. Will gets off the plane, peeks his head out, and goes, anybody here from Claremore? Yeah, he's always messing with people, right? He's always messing with people. Will gets back in the plane. They fly about an hour south. They see a, nat- uh, a, a camp of natives. There's a lot of fog, and Wiley's not real comfortable going the direction he wanted to go. So they stop. Will and Wiley ask directions, kind of a better way to go. It's still really foggy. As they take off, the plane is already a nose-heavy plane. It's got the pontoons on it. The engine backfires, and the plane goes down around 300 feet up in the air, crashes, kills both, both men, Wiley and Will. Now, when we're talking to kids, this is a tough part. This is a tough part to talk about. But I always say this. When you're talking about Will, you've got to talk about Abraham Lincoln. You've got to talk about some of the great Americans that we've produced here, right? Will is one of those folks. Why? Because the national outpouring of grief after Will passed away was that along the lines of Abraham Lincoln. 15,000 per hour were going by his casket. This was a man that was truly missed for not just being a cowboy entertainer, right? He was the conscious, consciousness of the people, right? The people of America. And that's why when I'm talking to kids, what can they be inspired by? Is it a moment with Dan Walker? Is it Vincente? Is it Betty telling him to be funny, right? Loosen them up a little bit more? Is it the president laughing? Is it the president asking him to come to the White House? It's these moments that never happened to anybody else except old Will Rogers. And that's why I think his story is that special. It's a Lincoln story. He grew up here 12 miles away in the White House on the Vertigris and went all the way to the White House, on the Ver- White House in D.C. Think about all that stuff I told you in between. There's a lot more, by the way. <laughs> if you guys had an extra hour, which you don't, <laughs> I'd tell you it all, right? That's the story. That's the story of Will Rogers, and that's why we remember the guy. That's why I'm up here doing what I do. Am I a sweaty mess right now? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'll be sweaty the rest of the day. I love being able to connect people to their history. It doesn't matter that you're from North Carolina or South Carolina. Will affected the whole country and the whole world. We still believe he's got that power today. Okay? Thank you for listening to me. At the end, real quick, I always like to go from, obviously, talking about his death there. It was a little, it was a little tough, especially for kids. But I like to end with Will Rogers' biggest rope trick. All right? Now, I've been practicing this for four months. For real. <laughs> Getting all sweaty up here. So I want to end with the Texas skip. Okay? 25 feet of rope. Texas skip. Now, if I mess it up, we're going to call it the Texas trip. Okay? All right? Guys, I've told that joke 20 times. It always works. <laughs> it always works. But seriously, folks, thank you for letting me talk. Um, I'll do my rope trick, and then uh, we'll be done. Uh, you guys are more than welcome to ask questions. Um, and we can either watch a film or whatever you would like to do. But thank you for letting me have this time with you. Uh, like I said, I love my job. Uh, I taught seventh grade social studies before this, so just believe me, this is a awesome, awesome time, right? So it's like coming back home. All right, so here we go. I'm going to do this big trick here. But again, I am going to have you do this part. I always have the kids do this as well. Give me a drum roll, please. There we go, okay. All right, a little drum roll. We're going to do the Texas skip, right? Not the Texas trip here. Here we go. Here we go. Woo! <laughs> okay.